I am blessed. Amen. What we got this <laughs> evening? I'm going to read a piece on worshiping God in spirit. Just, and Just in spirit alone or spirit and truth? Well, in spirit. In this spirit. part is in spirit. All right. Let's well, start. truth, of course. Um, however, I just want to take this time and say a pleasant good evening to all out there, every single person. And I just pray that God will continue blessing us because he said that we are blessed and not cursed. Amen. Amen. However, um, like I said, the piece is called Worshiping in Spirit, Worshiping God that is in Spirit. Um, <clears throat> worshiping God in Spirit means reverence, attentiveness, and having the right purpose of honoring God while understanding what we are doing. Hebrews 12, 28 to 29 says, Let us have grace by which we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. For our God is a consuming fire. Our worship must glorify God. 1 Corinthians 6, 20 says, For you were brought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which with Sorry, which are gods, the body and the spirit, which are gods. In order to worship God in the right spirit, we must take time before worship to make ready our hearts and emotions so we must be in a proper frame of mind. We should not have to rush or hurry to worship, arriving late, but should always would plan to be there early enough so we can be in a worshipful attitude and spirit. Our mind must be ready, attentive, and alert. Concerning the Lord's Supper, we are warned in 1 Corinthians eleven twenty-seven: Therefore, whosoever eats this bread or drinks this cup of the Lord is on unworthy manner will be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. Our worship to God must be done in a worthy manner. It must be done in a manner that brings glory and honor to God and Jesus Christ. Continuing to read in verse 29. For he who eats and drinks are in unworthy manner, eats and drinks judgment to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. We must control our thoughts during periods of worship and not let them wander to other things. We should never be wishing the worship service would hurry up and be over so we can get to the restaurant early and not have to stand in line. In fact, we should be on the frame of mind that we are disappointed to see that the worship service end. In showing reverence and respect to God, we will not be indifferent, inattentive, and taking lightly that which should be considered serious. Worship to God is holy. Our character in worship must also be holy. In 1 Peter 1, 16-17 we read, But as he who called you is holy, you also be holy in your conduct, because it is written, Be holy, for I am holy. Slouching over, sleeping, playing with babies, scrumming, unnecessary talking, and passing notes all shows disrespect in worshiping God. Active participation will tend to get rid of our lack of interest and inattentiveness. Reverence is not having a long face, folded hands, or a put of look of pity. Worship is a time of joy for us. It is a time of offering thanks, adoration, love, praying, singing, praises to God, feeding on his word, and proclaiming Christ to the word in partaking of the Lord's Supper. Thank you so much for listening. You have a blessed and wonderful week ahead, and stay encouraged, saying the things of God. Keep on holding to God's unchanging hand. His hands will never change. As long as you hold his hands, he will continue holding your hands. You have a blessed night. Thanks. Wow, that's, that's a 
that's an awesome, awesome piece. That's an awesome piece. And um, wow, I want to ask you a question though. I mean, and we, I think we had we had a topic during the week, and is is like it was referring to people looking at you and thinking that you are too holy or you're acting too holy. You're, 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 you're playing a thing and you're, you're playing holy and, and stuff like that. And that was in my spirit a lot. Um, there was some way in the Bible that speaks of the children of Israel and how they start taking God thing like a joke. Like they start putting themselves in a place like, well, we already made it, so it's no big deal. And then we look at um, the scenario with, with Noah and the ark. This morning I was meditating on that. In the time when Noah, with Noah and the ark, there were many, many people on the earth who believed that there is a God and who believed that there is a superpower and whatever. And they still didn't make it because they didn't live what they say or they didn't represent what they thought of, let's say, the great, the great creator who created the heaven and earth, they had the information, but they never serve God or worship God with reverence or see the things of God being serious, like whatever, like that. And I'm saying this to say, are we falling in that same kind of category nowadays that, well, we believe in hell, we believe all that, but we don't believe in the seriousness of it and, and that, that God is, is, is to be reverent in a serious way? Um, I do believe that people, some people out there believe that because um, personally I have um, witnesses, witness it with people. They think, they take the things of God very lightly and um, the things of God is very, very serious. Imagine that you don't even know, you don't know when he's coming. Right now, as we're talking, we're on the radio, he could come. We don't know. He said no one's know the hour not a minute, not a day, not a second. We just don't know. And with that said, taking the word of God, taking the things of God lightly, you might just be um, setting yourself for hell. Because if you are not serious in doing something, you are going to do it carelessly. And doing things carelessly, you may lose something. So in that sense, with Christ, with his word, you will lose your salvation. You will lose that, 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 that. You will lose your opportunity to enter into his kingdom, which is the everlasting kingdom. Wow. And, and like I said, um, I'm, I mean, I'm just going over this like this. And because look at this. He gave his only son to die for us. To that give is us serious. That, that, that is very serious. That salvation. And then we come into it now. And you see, I'm saying this. You know, I don't think that God meant it in a legalistic way that you have to just be all crazy. Everything you do, you just check what you do. And that is why we are under grace because it's from the love that we have for God and the appreciation. We should be representing the things of God and what we believe, the faith that he has sent his son to die for us so that we can enter in the kingdom. But so then there must be some sort of seriousness attached well, to it. I would rather, seriously, I don't know for you, but I would rather be crazy for God. Being crazy for God, it's a good crazy. Because you are crazy for Christ. You know, because it will make sense for you to be crazy, doing crazy things and not for him. Your craziness should be for him. You know, in that way, you know, your craziness will pay off. <laughs> that, 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 that is serious. But I'm, I'm saying, you know, I'm, like I said, overall, what I'm reflecting on is... The, the world at the time of Noah and all the people that was on the earth because you see there are people right now living who believe that there is a God and they believe in a superpower and although he has claimed through his holy word that you can receive me in that way and come to me that way I send my son and he is the door to come to me people as much as they believe in all the seriousness of God they still don't believe that they have to do what God said. They just don't believe. They don't believe. And um, if you don't believe, you don't have any faith, you know. And um, if you don't have faith, you are not going to see the things of God. It's impossible for you to see the things of God without faith, you know. People are just too, too, too laid back with the things of God. The things of God need to be taken very serious. And I will repeat it again. The things of God need to be taken 
very serious, not lightly. We don't know when he's going to come. We need to do the right thing all the time. You know, right now there are people listening and saying you're playing, you're playing with holy. Well, man. it's okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm being realistic. And though. I'm serious. You know, that, you know that, right? And I am serious. But it you know that, okay. right? Yes, and it's okay. And I will say it to them again. It's okay. If you want to say that I am playing holy, that is fine. Because guess what? You know, when that great day comes, we want to know who is playing and who is not playing. You know, so sitting wherever, I am not saying you are, but if you are, you could sit there and say I'm playing holy. That is fine. I but, can take but that. Let's let's equate this with the same way that how how genuine and how generous God is. That God is such a fear and balanced God that He gives us all the opportunity oh. and, and sort of um chances and example in life as to the true application of life. That people who went to school and saw you in class and thought that you were being that kind of mama girl and you always want to do this and you're always early and everything teachers say you want to do it and all this whatever. I mean, don't we have testimonies of now that you finished school or now that we have finished school, the same people who was complaining and thinking that you were this and you were that, now they're looking at you in, in a high position or looking at you with your job or looking at you with your achievement and now the same people are jealous or the same people are going to look at you and feel you think you're this and you think you're that. But I'm saying this to say the example yes. that if you don't work for something, you cannot get it. There <laughs> must be work involved. Well, that is so right. And the thing is, you know, what's really, really funny about this is you may not finish and you may, you may have a chance to go back and finish. But when you get to hell, you are not coming back. Wow. <laughs> you sound like Pastor Ford, you, know? <laughs> you sound like a pastor, you know. But, um, but, but, but um, you know, really and truly, I look at it in, in that kind of context because the Bible tells us very, very specifically. In the later days, you know, the, the man hearts will wax cold. Yes. You know, the, the, the fire for Jesus and the fire for righteousness will be quenched in a kind of, you know, kind of passive way. <laughs> like, okay, I believe it, but I don't think it's that big emergency. Yeah, because some people think I will have the time. Okay, I will go out doing my thing tonight. Tomorrow morning, I'm going to wake up and I'm going to pray and say, God, forgive me. Yes, you may be lucky that tomorrow you were able to say that, but you may not be lucky. And, and also in that case, if you keep doing it over and over, it's like a sort of presumptuous Yes, like like there are yes. people it's who okay, sin. they go on the parkway, they jump up Labor Day, and, was, they, and they go next day and they go to the priest in a little box and they say, Father, forgive me. Yeah. And as they leave that box, they call the airline and say, guess what? Next year, if you have any ticket for carnival, make sure you book one for me or I'm going to pay on my costume for next year. That's so you're already sin. planning to yeah. do the same thing from la last year. And that's why many people love certain religion. Because certain religion make them feel comfortable that you could do the world and still do God and still be credible as a witness for God in the name if, of Jesus. If you could have done the world and do God, his word would not say that people of the world, people without his spirit, if you are not of him, you cannot understand his stuff. You cannot understand the word of God if you are not of God. You know, if you are not of the spirit, you cannot understand the things of the spirit. So that means there are people who do not understand the spirit. So what that is saying, you are of the world. Because it clearly says in the Bible that we are in the world, but not of the world. That is those that have accepted him as the Lord and personal savior. So if you have not accepted Christ as your Lord and personal savior, you will not understand the things of God. So the best thing to do is come in and accept him. Come in. You know, he's not going to push you away. He's not going to bite you. He's not going to kick you. He is ready to receive you because he said you knock at the door and it will be open to you. You seek and you will find. So please come to God. He is waiting with arms open, wide open to receive you. Hallelujah. Glory to the name of Jesus. Well, we, we still have a, a couple minutes. If anybody out there, you want to call on the phone, you have a comment, you want to add something, you want to... You know, you know, you probably correct us if we said something wrong. The phone is 
663-863-8638 if you're out there and you want to, you know, chime in a little bit as we have a little time before we get ready for the next segment. The phone is open 347-663-863 and that's to, to do with definitely the same conversation in reference to the seriousness of being a child of God. And, you know, like I said, you know, I, I, I understand how human beings function, you know, and the enemy is going to try to find any way he could find to break down those who are already in Christ or break down those who, you know, trying to, you, you know, if, if, if you leave room for the devil to sow any seed of not unbelief, but a, a seed of carelessness then, that a kind of lackadaisical kind of yeah, attitude. Because you're a Christian, but you don't feel it's that serious anymore. You receive Christ, but you think you could do it anyhow. And, you know, well, God is a forgiving God, so I could do this over and over. And I mean, a lot of us have that the, kind of notion. The same way that when the, the Holy Spirit comes in to a person who, I mean, accept Christ, that Holy Spirit comes in and then you will able, once that Holy Spirit is in, you are able to bear much fruits for Christ. It's the same way when the devil have the hold of you, you will be, you will be sowing seeds for the devil. But one thing, you are being warned. You are being warned. It is not something that you're doing and then you don't know. You are being warned. So don't say you didn't hear because I'm sure there are persons out there who have heard, who is hearing right now what we are saying on Choice Radio and will not take heed. We'll go about and say, oh, those people are speaking all oh, just garbage, just gibberish and whatever, and they'll go about the, the, the business. But that day will come and then it's going to be played back to you. So you will not say you didn't hear it because it will be played back. You're going to see it's like, a, like, it's like a recording. It's going to rewind up to you and you will know, yes, you will have no, nothing to say, well, I didn't know because they were going to show you. It will be shown to you. Amen. But, but the, the key reality is God is a fair God. He is. All God the is way. a good God. God is a just God. He is. And I'm talking about the reference in terms of what you sow is what, what you, you reap. reap. We can look clearly at life. And I mean, you know, I, I just say the wisdom of God is just, I mean, God, he's just something else. Because he want to make sure there is no blood on my hands. In this final journey, there would be zero blood on my hands. Because when I play back the tape for you, I'm going to show you when you was young and somebody came with the word of God to you, you reject them. You, when you was 19 years old, somebody came with the word, you reject them. When he was 21, when he was 40, when he was 45, when he was 50, people came to you and they told you about me and they explained to you in, in, in terms that you could totally understand and you rejected me. Yes. Now you are free to go where you're going to go and there is no blood on my hands because I have shown you everything in life. I've shown you that you, you sow this seed, you got that kind of crop. You see your friend sow a certain seed and got that kind of crop. You still didn't pay no attention to it. You went further. You saw people who probably couldn't even read and write. And they start proclaiming the gospel. It still didn't strike you to get serious with it. And you went further down. So now when you come to God, God have zero. You have nothing to say. You have nothing to say. Amen. Have nothing. I personally, I don't know for you, but I personally have reason, reasons to be fear of God. I am not fear of the devil. But I'm afraid of God. I'm afraid of his wrath. You know, I have seen what God could do. He has shown me stuff. I, ha I have testimony upon testimony to prove that God is real. That he is there for his own. And I have reason today, I will say boldly, that I have reasons to be afraid of God and to do what he says. I am not perfect. But I'm Nobody fighting is. for perfection because is. in is. his words, he said that we should be perfect as our heavenly father is perfect. Be perfect in Christ Jesus. Perfect yes. in Christ Amen. Jesus. So I am striving for that and I will get there. Why don't you give us a testimony of something that you have seen in terms of the reality of hell? Or something that, give us, a, come on, give us a well, testimony. Well, I, I, I said it on the radio before. Mm -hmm. I had a, a, a person that was very close to me that passed away, that died. And I was so distraught. I was very, very disappointed. I was upset. And I was like, why? Why that happened? And that day I said, I said to God, you know what, Christ, you're going to have to show me where she is. I want to know. 
I want to know. And I was so serious that I want to know because I just couldn't understand it. I was so bitter. I wanted to know where she was. And the night I went to and bed... And uh, before you go further, and the reason why you really wanted to know because you knew that you spoke to her about Jesus and she tell you, oh, you're playing pastor. Yeah, I think I'm a pastor. Now, I think I'm a pastor, yes. So, you know, that was the, one of the reasons why I really wanted to know because I spoke to this individual like, um, I would say, months, three, four months before her death. And then um, she said to me, oh, you think you're a pastor? Are you a pastor? And I said, I'm not a pastor, but I'm just telling you what, you know, what God wants us to do and whatever. And, you know, when that death came, I just didn't take it very light. And like I um, continue saying that I actually went and I was so serious that I wanted to see where she was. And I went to bed that night and I saw three people coming to escort this individual. I couldn't see who they were. They had stuff over the head, the hood, like the hood, hood over the head, like the like, KKK. Yeah, but in black hood. In black hood over the head. And then when I, I couldn't see who they were, but they were like, at the place they were taking this individual, it was kind of like all darkness. All darkness, I couldn't see. I, I didn't see trees. I didn't see house. I didn't see nothing. It was just darkness. And I said, who are you guys? Who are you guys taking? Where are you guys taking this person? I can't even see who you are. And it was said to me in the dream, it's none of your concern. You wanted to know where she's going, and I showed you where she's going, and that's it. And that was the dream. But then when I woke up the morning, I was telling my husband about it, and I said, you know what? When you ask God for something, what you ask, ask him, that's what he gives you. And, you know, I specifically remember I said, where is she going? And that's all I saw. But I know, I saw this out of darkness. I saw that darkness and I knew it was not the devil. The devil would never allow me to see something like that. And I repeat, never allow me to see something like that. And I saw that. And that is one of the dreams out of many that I've had that I am so afraid of God. I'm fearful of what is right. And I will trust in him and obey him. Amen. Thank you for that testimony indeed. And, and guys, you know, we just really and truly, um, we, we're not, you know, claiming to be all that, but, you know, based on what God has done in our life and based on what he has shown us, we want to encourage you to keep going on. Because hell is real. On. He's worthy. Everything he said in his word is going to come true for those who love him and those who are serious about him. And those who want to make that total transformation to be a child of God. Amen. So we just want to be an encouragement to you and to everybody out there. That's our sole intention. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you. All right. So it's time for it's time for results. Okay. Um, well, of course, um, we had three um, persons that call. And the winner is um, no other than Maureen, Sh Maureen, Ms. Shepherd. Maureen Shepherd. All right. Miss Maureen Shepherd. Amen, indeed. And then we thank all those who call and participate. Amen. And, you know, it's just definitely a great thing to, to lift up the name of Jesus in the Psalms and be proud to read for the Lord and whatever it is. So we thank all the listeners for listening. In the name of Jesus, be blessed this afternoon. We just thank you. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you for salvation. We thank you for saving us. We thank you, Jesus. And everybody out there who has chosen Lord Jesus as your Lord and Savior, be blessed. Continue to strive to be the best that you can be for him. Amen. Continue to reverence him as King of Kings, Lord of Lords. Amen. Conquering lion. Don't allow the world to sway you, to devalue your reverence, and to devalue your honor for the creator of heaven and earth. Amen. Do what you can. Kick and scream. Do what you want to defend God. Amen. And to defend what he has done for you. All right. Whatever you need to do, everybody wouldn't understand it. Your friends wouldn't understand it. Your, your, your close people wouldn't understand it. But do what you got to do because the salvation is a personal thing. Say something again, baby. All right. So my wife is going to be praying out as we, we just, you know, thank you guys once again. And we lift up the name of Jesus. Go ahead, baby. Oh, Father, I thank you, Lord. I thank you this day, God, because you are such a, a wonderful God. You are such a loving God, Father. 
Father, I pray right now, God, Lord Jesus, that you're going to continue blessing us. You're going to continue laying your hands on us and pouring out this blessing to us, your people, God. Everyone, God, that has got to know you, who knows that you are the almighty God. You are the El Shaddai God. We can do nothing without you, God. Everything that we do, God, is all because of your love, all because of your grace, all because of your mercies, all because of your care, Father. We do the things that we do, Father. Father, we pray today, Lord Jesus, that we take away self, we decrease it from us, Father, as you increase you in us, Father, only you, Heavenly Father, that we can go about doing the things that you want us to do, God. Father, I pray, Lord Jesus, God, that you are going to cleanse us from all unrighteousness, Father, from all evil works, God, from all evil things that comes out from our tongue, Father. You cleanse us from that, Father God. Heavenly Father, I pray, Lord Jesus, God, right now, God, that if there's anyone out there that is sick right now, God, because you said by your stripe we are healed, Father, that this person will hear and know that they are healed today, God. By your stripe, God, we are healed, God. Heavenly Father, I know, Lord God, that you you want us to enter into your kingdom. It's only we have to receive. Receive you, Father, for us to be there, Father. And I pray that more people receive you, God. More people be receptive of your word, Father, that they will hear the things that you want them to hear. They will see the things that you want them to see, God. They will speak the things that you want them to say, Father. They'll go to places that you want them to go, Father. Heavenly Father, I pray for love and peace to revive in us today, Father. Father, I pray that if there are any broken bones in our body that it is meant today father father i pray lord jesus right now for darkness god to remove from us lord jesus wherever we are to remove the darkness with light replace light with this darkness god because darkness is not of you father father you are the light and you want us to be your light you want us to be the light to shine in this world father so others can get to know you father father i pray right now lord jesus that we're gonna launch our nets out into the deep father God and tell people about you Lord Jesus because you are so wonderful God you are so great father there's nothing no one compares to you God father we thank you for all the things that you have done in our lives in the people's life the lives of the people that you have called father God father I pray today for the little things we may say that it's nothing God but the little things that you have done in our life God I thank you for it also father father I thank you for all our children out there Lord God, that will they will get to know you, their parents, people, you will put people in place, angels, and let them tell them about you because they are the future of tomorrow, God. Father, I thank you for sparing our lives, Father God. Today wasn't promised to any one of us, but today we are in the land of the living, God. Father, most of us have eyes to see, we have hands to feel, we have feet to walk, Father. We have all our senses. There are people out there that cannot see, but we thank you, Father. Those of us who are seen we thank you god we thank you we thank you god because you are so great father god heavenly father continue taking care protecting us father because we know that you are a great god father and we ask lord jesus god to forgive us from all our sins all our iniquities today god we pray in no other name but in your son jesus jesus christ the one who died on the cross for our sins that we can have a second chance to enter into your kingdom the name that is above all name jesus jesus, jesus. Hallelujah. hallelujah hallelujah amen and amen amen indeed thank you baby all right guys we have come to the top of the segment we appreciate your listenership we thank you for listening amen be blessed let's do this let's honor him in jesus amen so be blessed the next program coming up He's already in the building, the man, Brother Philip. Back to the Bible way. We love you in the name of Jesus. Good night. Sister Shepherd, you'll be hearing from us. Amen. Congratulations.